507.0 pounds. Oh, 507.0. I have a loss. Okay, I'll take that. If you guys hear chomping and chewing in the background, Twinkie's eating her breakfast. But I was 507.0, which I'm so happy about. All right, strap yourselves in, you masochists, because we're about to dive headfirst into the steaming pile of garbage known as the Amberverse. Get ready for a ride wilder than a drunken bender in Vegas. In this latest dumpster fire of an episode, we're treated to the riveting spectacle of multiple ceiling shot weigh-ins, because apparently watching Amber waddle onto a scale is more entertaining than a blue movie collection marathon. Spoiler alert, she's packed on a hefty six pounds, and surprise, surprise, she's blaming it on mutt depression. Classic Amber move always pointing fingers faster than a guilty toddler caught with their hand in the cookie jar. But wait, it gets better. Our girl's got some revolutionary life hacks to share, like stacking her laundry basket on top of her rolling suitcase. Yeah, she's basically the Einstein of laziness. And let's not forget about Amber's groundbreaking revelation about her mental health and eating habits. Like, OMG, did you know that when her mental health takes a nosedive, so does her eating? Mind blown. Except, you know, she conveniently forgets about the other 20 times she's had this earth-shattering epiphany. And speaking of mental health, Amber's suddenly terrified to admit she's depressed because of the stigma. Yeah, because being labeled a depressed overeater is so much worse than being known as the chick who inhales rotisserie chickens like they're goddamn Tic Tacs. But hey, let's not wallow in the negativity, because Pluto has finally left Capricorn, and apparently that's cause for celebration in Amber's world. Rejoice, peasants, for the stars have aligned, and all is right in the land of delusion and denial. And just when you thought things couldn't get any weirder, Amber's new apartment is apparently a hotbed of demonic activity, because why the hell not? Let's just hope her camera has a night vision mode, because I, for one, can't wait to see Amber's ghostly encounters while she's stuffing her face with Cheetos at 3 a.m. All right, let's hear about some of this nonsense from her own mouth. Oh, God. I could cry, but I'm not going to. This um, actually breaks my heart. So yesterday was the worst day food-wise that I have had the whole January. What you guys are seeing is a lot of hot Cheeto and Reese's, a lot of salt, a lot of salt, ramen, just like literally yesterday was so bad. I just, I can't even put it into terms. It just truly felt like I could not get full physically, mentally, emotionally, like it doesn't matter. I gain weight so easy. The sodium is no joke. And normally situations like this would make me cry, but it's like, why am I gonna cry when I did this to myself? Like I literally did this to myself. No one did this to me. No one did this for me. This is my fault. So instead of crying, I'm gonna use this as motivation to do better. We can't, we can't let days like this happen. Like. These used to happen way too often. Listen up, Amberlyn. Pull yourself together because I'm about to lay down some truth bombs. In January 2025, you might have a shot at a fresh start, but let's be real. You're living on the edge, babe. For a measly three days, you'll get to pretend like you're turning over a new leaf. But who are we kidding? With your lifestyle, who knows if you'll even make it that far? I mean, let's not beat around the bush here. You're playing a game of Russian roulette with your own health. And for all you math whizzes out there, gaining a hefty six pounds in a week means our girl here shoveled an extra 21,000 calories down her gullet. Yeah, wrap your head around that. That's like chowing down on 10.5 extra days worth of food for the average Joe. And when you add that to the recommended 2,000 calories per day, thanks NHS, we're looking at over 35,000 calories in a single week. But hey, who's counting, right? Keep on living in la-la land, Amberlynn. Just try not to kick the bucket before January rolls around. There's just so much stigma around it, and I just, I don't know. But I am depressed. And I don't know why. Like, 
I have no reason to be depressed other than mental illness. Like, I have been like denying it. I have been in denial and I've just noticed the last few days just that feeling of it coming and today it just like really hit me and I just haven't wanted to get out of bed. The only thing that I am finding the strength to do is literally get out of bed and take Twinkie outside. Days like this used to happen for me a lot, very frequently. Like my emotions used to be very back and forth, up and down. It was like I was either depressed or manic. There was never like an in-between. And it's like lately, just over time, especially within the time of living on my own, I have found some sort of balance. So for me to feel this way and to feel as low as I do, I just feel really sad. And it's like... Oh, for the love of all that's holy, here we go again with the Amberlin logic. I've got untreated BPD, PTSD, anxiety, and major depressive disorder, but screw doing anything about it. I'll just stop taking my meds and wonder why I'm drowning in sadness. Seriously, girl, pull your head out of your ass and smell the roses. Quit with the damn victimization act, Amber. There's no stigma holding you back from seeking help, so stop playing that tired old tune. You've got the time and the funds to get treatment, but instead you'd rather bask in the glow of your own damn misery and milk it for all the attention it's worth. So, here's a reality check for you, Amberlin. Stop being a whiny little bitch, own up to your own damn mess, and maybe, just maybe, yay, you'll crawl out of that pit of despair. But knowing you, you're more likely to sprout wings and fly to the moon than you are to actually change. So, good luck with that, I guess. I feel like a failure right now at life, and I have missed uploading days because of this and it's like the only thing i could do is ride the wave um this has been my life for my whole life and i just have to ride the wave the thing is like sometimes the wave it lasts months weeks and sometimes just a couple of days i just want to be okay and i want to feel okay and today's just not just not it for me like if you would have asked me four days ago, Amberlynn, how are you doing? I would have said, I'm great. I'm happy. I'm good. And today I'm like miserable beyond belief. And I just feel so sad, like within my soul. But I know it's because I'm depressed and that's just how I am feeling right now. So if anyone else is struggling with depression, just know I know how it feels and you're not alone and we're going to get through it. Oh, for fuck's sake, Amber. Get your head out of your oversized ass and listen up. A shit ton of us deal with depression, anxiety, and a whole cocktail of mental disorders. And we, we don't get to call in fucking sick every time we feel a bit blue. Sometimes we've got to drag our sorry asses out of bed and face the goddamn day like grown-ass adults. You remember sitting with the discomfort, right? Well, guess what, princess? Life's one big discomfort, and you've got to learn to suck it up and deal with it. Stop playing the victim like it's your favorite fucking pastime. You're depressed because you're lugging around enough weight to sink a goddamn battleship and you're, you're trying to cram three days worth of work into seven fucking minutes. Face it, Amber, your life's a goddamn train wreck and you've got nothing to look forward to except another round of stuffing your face and waddling around like a fucking manatee. It's like you're living just to scrape by and avoid shuffling off this mortal coil. So do yourself a favor and set yourself a damn goal. Something achievable for once in your pathetic excuse for a life. Pull your head out of your ass, grab life by the balls, and start acting like you give a flying fuck about your own existence. What? Holy? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's my new favorite snack. Wow, that's great. Have you ever ate something so good you just have to like close your eyes for a minute? Okay guys, so I just sat here and edited this whole vlog. Originally it was almost 40 minutes and somehow I got it down like half that time. That's pretty amazing, but I'm sorry this video is up way past when it should be. <laughs> I was supposed to be uploading every other day and I have flopped, but I am feeling better now. 
um, mental illness is just as important as getting the flu. Sometimes you just need a break. The way you devoured that pepper with your eyes shut tight, that's the smoking gun, Amber. It's not about the depression. It's about your twisted love affair with food, turning every meal into a roller coaster ride. You're chasing a high, girl, and it's downright unsettling to watch. Let's cut the crap. Until you find healthier coping mechanisms, you're gonna keep spiraling down this rabbit hole of addiction. It's not about finding happiness, it's about numbing the pain with every bite. And until you face that harsh reality, change ain't gonna come knocking at your door. So here's a thought. Maybe it's time to crack open a book that's not filled with recipes. The AA book could be your reality check, a mirror to reflect on why you keep falling back into old habits. Sure, it's, it's scary as hell to let go of your crutch, but it's also the only way forward. You've gotta face your demons head on and find a healthier path. It's not gonna be a cakewalk, but damn it, it's possible. So quit making excuses, Amber, and start paving the road to a better life. You owe it to yourself, don't you think?